two regular army. Lieutenant! Well, we've been over this. That sniper barely missed you back on the beach. Until the mission is over, there'll be no more saluting or signs of rank. I'm in charge here, Medier. Do you wish to interrogate the prisoners? I know they're beat. Why they look so sullen. They're wondering why we haven't killed them yet. There is no greater shame than being taken prisoner. Get this, Golden Boy. I just seems to know what he's doing. Not to know Kai so to. See that boys? He slapped that Jap right upside the head. It was merely to remind him of his place. His shame was the tone of voice that he used with a superior. I respect the Japanese, Corporal. Respect, we're here to kill the sons of bitches. Do you know why we are fighting the Japanese, Private? With respect, sir, these bastards attacked Pearl Harbor. And why did they attack Pearl, Private? Because they hate the U.S. of A. and our way of life. They attacked the U.S. because we cut off their oil. What would we do if another country denied us the gas to run our cars? Like the fight game, Phelps? I did a little boxing in the Marines. I found it a pretty humbling experience. Fix your sandwich, buddy. Corned beef and egg salad, 12 cents. Bologna and ham and cheese, 10. It's strictly a mugs game. You'll like this fight, though. A plucky limey's about to take a beating from an up-and-coming Negro. You sound pretty sure about the result. I ought to be. I got 50 bucks on the black kid. Let's get a ringside seat. Son of a bitch Hammond made a run for his dressing room. Let's find out what's going on. God damn you, Albert! You get out here right now! Step back! LAPD! What's going on? That son of a bitch Hammond has jammed the door. And who are you? Carlo Arcaro. I'm his manager. I'm his trainer. Interesting attitude to have towards a victorious athlete. Victorious? We had an arrangement. We had a goddamn arrangement! That limey bastard was paid to take a nap. He reneged. And you were out of pocket? Damn right. Me and a couple hundred other people. Stand aside. He squeezed out the window. I'll put an APB out on him. Why would we do that? He won the fight fair and square. To prevent him from getting clipped. He was paid to flop. There was big money riding on this So are fight. we here because you lost money or because we're investigating a prize fighting racket? Very funny. Look around and see what you can find. Which is Hammond's locker? Over by the pin board, second from the end. Hammond was supposed to take a dive, but he didn't. He's gotten himself into some big trouble. Let's see if we can find him before he gets killed. Heading towards the pin board, second from the right. There's a phone number we can run by R&I. Plus a bunch of names and odds. You're not the only one who likes a flutter, Roy. Harry, 18 to 1. Mervyn, 22 to 1. Ray, 19 to 1. Sounds like these are odds he got from a bookie. Looks like we found our first port of call. Just as we're about to head that way, we pass a newspaper on one of the benches. Alienist Fontaine working selflessly to help the infirm. You look troubled. I'm in a jam, doctor. Can I help, Courtney? Is it money? No, no, doctor. That's okay. 
Do I have your professional confidence? Whatever you say will never leave this room. I talked some of the guys in my old unit into doing something, and it's gone wrong. I guess I did it for the wrong reasons, for short-term gain. We came home from China on the Cool Bridge. The morphine robbery. That was us. I thought I could get the guys a fair share. Some sort of benefit for the sacrifices that they made in the war. Those guys deserve it, Doctor. Oh, I'm sure they do, Courtney. But the deserving aren't always rewarded. Tell me about it, Doc. Uh, we shifted our stuff onto this mob-connected guy, and it's been turning up all over town. It wasn't meant to be like this. The presumption was rather naive, Courtney. I know that now, Doctor. But people are dying. Hmm. Might I venture a few questions? Sure. Do your underworld contacts have all the morphine? No, they don't. We doled it out, hoping we could control it. Are they pressing you for further allocation? That's the polite way of putting it, Doctor. I may be able to help you, Courtney. Thanks, Doc. It helps just to talk about it. I mean, I have a solution that will help you financially and salve your conscience. I'm all ears, Doctor. I will transact to take all the narcotic off your hands. Rest assured that it will all be medically administered. I will use the funds that I no longer require for the purchase of medication and invest them in housing developments. Housing? The developments in question are housing projects for former servicemen. Your return will come from the sale of the properties, and your investment will benefit those that you care for most. Does this arrangement meet with your approval? You're a magician, Doctor. And at last we've been given a big piece to the puzzle. It was Courtney and the 6th Marines, Cole's own platoon, that stole the morphine from the SS Cool Ridge. It was they who sold some of it to Mickey Cohen, who then gave it to his brother-in-law, Lenny the Fink, to dole out to junkies on the streets of LA. And it was that very same morphine we picked up in our first vice case. This is why Courtney approached Jack Kelso for help. This is what Jack and Courtney were confronting Mickey Cohen about in the alleyway in a previous video. But as we just learned, that wasn't all of it. Courtney just sold some to Fontaine, who will then invest that money in a housing scheme to build houses for vets. An interesting solution, but will that fix things for Courtney and the rest of Cole's old platoon? You better find that cocksucker and you bring him to me. I feel bad too, Mickey. He guaranteed me he would take the flop. I guarantee that you will be fish food if you don't bring me... Roy, you out of pocket too? Mickey, seems that way. Don't worry about it. My boys are out looking for him. Well, you'd better call them off. This is a police matter now. If anything happens to Hammond, I'll testify that you made threats against him. Who's the Greyhound? He's a frisky one, isn't he? Cole Phelps. Mickey Cohen. I know who he is, Roy. I, uh met his brother-in-law. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Cole, not one to pull any punches. I think you had the mixture pretty scared back there. At last, Cole meets Mickey Cohen, who presumably doesn't bear any grudges against Cole for killing Lenny the Fink, his brother-in-law. But Roy sure was cozy with Mickey. If we're gonna save Hammond and get to him before Mickey does, we need to find out where he was going. And to do so, we'll trace the number we found scribbled on his notepad. Phelps, badge 1247. How could I help, detective? I need an address for the following phone number, AL345. The address for the phone number is the Hotel El Mar, 6294 Leland Way, Hollywood. Thanks, ma'am. You know the place? Flop house. Quarter a night, no questions asked. 
So Hammond was staying at a sleazy flop house. Heading to the car, we can have Roy take us there. You seem to have a pretty cozy relationship with Cohen and Stampanato. Do I note a hint of reprimand in your tone, detective? Talking to gangsters comes with the turf. You should try out Mickey's place. He's got a haberdasher's up on Sunset. See if he can get you out of those old man's clothes that you slink around in. It's a front for his illegal activities. It is that, but he does carry some very sharp suits. If it's okay with you, I'll stick with Brooks Brothers. We arrive at the Elmar Hotel at 9.14 p.m. Outside, we find a newspaper salesman inexplicably selling the morning paper this late at night. Get this morning's edition hot off the press! Outside the door, we see two signs, cheap rates, hot water. What more could you ask for? Heading inside, we can talk to the front desk manager. Yeah, what do you want? LAPD. We're making inquiries into the whereabouts of an Albert Hammond. No one here by that name. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. This isn't the sort of place where people use their real names. Take a look at the register if you don't believe me. Okay, so look for prominent Tommies. That should narrow it down. Prominent Tommies? What have we here? Jimmy Cagney? Orson Welles? Shirley Temple? Danny Kaye? But wait, I thought he didn't want to leave the Congo. Oh, it's like all of Hollywood's best and brightest are staying at the Elmar Hotel. Heading over to the other side, we pass Harpo Marx and Clark Gable before we spot a gentleman from across the pond. Our Hammond was a limey, as he was called, so it may be that he signed in here as Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill. A very patriotic Englishman is staying in room 207. The old bulldog. Even at a flop house, Adley can't get out from his shadow. Heading upstairs, we find 207 right in front of the stairs. I was married by a judge. The door's unlocked. I should have asked for a jury. Looks like he's had a broad up here. I wonder why Roy said that. Our first clue comes when we examine the trash can. He must be heading home. You know, I hope he makes it. That crooked son of a bitch, no chance. Elvira Hammond, 12 Brick Lane, London, E1. Home soon. Your boy done good, Albert. A telegram to his mom. So Hammond was heading back to London. A smart move, but how far on his trip has he gotten? Nearby, we see why Roy says a woman was up here. On the dresser, we find half of a torn ticket stub. I guess a fighter has plenty of time on his hands between bouts. And next to this, a box of chocolates. Does Albert have somebody special? I didn't see anyone in his corner at the fight. So he took a date to the movies. On a nearby table, we see some soup. He left recently. It's still warm. And a magazine is open to a very interesting page. Instaheat. Adrian Black's product of choice. Seems like a lifetime ago. Both Instaheat and Parnell's are brands from previous cases, but on the opposite page, we see an advertisement for a house. Modern living with a touch of natural style. Win this Southcott shingle home. Win the home of your dreams. And somebody has filled in this coupon. Candy Edwards, and she's given us an address. Candy has expensive taste. Albert has his work cut out for him. Who's Candy? Candy Edwards, the lady who filled out this coupon. All right, let's go after his girl. See if that gets us any closer. So Hammond had a girl, Candy Edwards, and she was thinking of buying a house with him. But why then did we just learn that Hammond was heading back to London? We find our next clue on the bedside nightstand. Looks like Albert has been doing some homework. 11 grand would be a nice little nest egg. 3,600 from one bookie, 4,070 from another, 4,085 from the next if he wins. For a total of 11,755. All right, let's go after his girl. See if that gets us any closer. Hammond knew exactly what he was doing. But did Candy know what Hammond was doing? She conveniently provided us with her address. So heading to the car, we can have Roy drive us there. So you boxed in the Marines? We all did. 
Standard training. I can't imagine you ever played dirty. The only prize for taking a fall was a thousand push-ups. The address brings us to the Aleve Motel. We arrive at 9.25 p.m. We need to know which room is Candy's. Heading inside, we move to the front desk. Can I That's help the guy. you, gentlemen? I heard LAPD man. Cop. We're looking for Candy Edwards. Uh, that's an oxymoron Apartment story. 7. You take the outside stairs by the parking lot and turn left at the top. You friends of the Italian guy? Italian guy? Yeah. Sleazy type? Gave his name as Carlo. I didn't like the look of him, but Candy has some funny friends. Thanks. This candy broad must be as sweet as she sounds. All these gentlemen callers. The Italian guy? Uh-oh, has Mickey beat us here? Racing upstairs, we overhear a confrontation. Give it up, Sounds bitch. like we're missing he's all the fun. Get, get in there, Phelps. You know where he's hiding. Now tell me where he is before I cut you. <laughs> like hitting women, dude. <laughs> this isn't gonna end well for you, friend. <laughs> It wasn't one of Mickey's goons. It was Carlo Arquero, his own manager. Sounds like Mickey's threat really made an impression. Out cold, but breathing. Give her a minute and take a look around. We don't find anything until we search his jacket pocket. Nasty weapon. All the Italians carry them. A real man uses his fists or a gun. Some interesting philosophy there from Roy. And despite finding this deadly weapon, we put it back. We don't find an option to take it, strangely. Searching the opposite jacket pocket. Carlo here seems to have the same friends as Hammond. What are the odds on them all being bookmakers? So Carlo had the same idea as Hammond, only he was betting against Hammond. These must be the names of other bookies. While the two are passed out, we can inspect the room. She's leaving town. We don't find much until we examine the nearby dresser. Scania sails from New York. And probably from New York to London. Next to this. Single ticket, one way. I guess there isn't a lot for Albert in Ohio. So Candy wasn't planning to go with him to London. She has a one-way bus ticket to Ohio. Did she know what he was going to do? Was she going to take her share of the winnings and ditch him? Take a seat, Miss Edwards. We have some questions for you to answer. Look, I haven't done anything wrong. Ever? I find that pretty hard to believe. Can you answer some questions now, Miss Edwards? Sure, I've had worse. I'll shake it off. Well, we can start by asking her the pertinent question, where is Hammond? We're trying to track down Albert Hammond. We have reason to believe he might be in danger. Do you know where he is? No, I don't. I'm over Albert. I haven't seen him. So they've had a bit of a split up. But if true, she's not being very convincing. She's pursing her lips, nodding her head. And then she looks down and to the left as if she's trying to remember something. Oh, but then she gets it and she smirks and looks up. She's not making eye contact because she doesn't want to get caught in her lie. And we know she's lying. You gonna stand around here all day? A girl's got things to do. You're lying, Candy. You were in his hotel room. He came back after the fight and you weren't there. What happened? You can't prove that I was in the room. But we can prove she was in the room and that she likely knows where Hammond went. Because in that hotel room, we found a magazine with her handwriting on it. How do you think we found you, Candy? You wrote your name and address on a coupon. Look, Albert was supposed to take a fall. We were all supposed to make a little money out of it. But Albert got too goddamn stubborn said his pride was all he had left. So I told him, shove it. Let's see his pride keep him warm at night. So you walked out before the fight? Yes, I did. What's the problem? I didn't take anything. Okay, so she knew he wasn't going to take a fall, and she left him over it? Maybe we can learn more if we ask her about the list of odds we recovered from Hammond's locker. Do the names Harry, Mervyn, or Ray mean anything to you? Could be anybody. How the hell would I know? 
She's being coy. She already confessed that she was hoping to make a little bit of money out of this, but perhaps if she knew that Hammond wasn't going to take the fall, she had planned to make even more money out of it. She again is shifting her weight, refusing to make eye contact, and every now and then holding back a smug little smirk. But we know she's lying. They're bookmakers, aren't they? Tell me the truth. How the hell would I know? Because in Hammond's apartment, which we know she recently visited, we found the bookmaker's payouts. If Hammond didn't write this, then Candy did. Either way, she was in the same room with him and could have read this at any time. This is proof that she knows who the bookmakers are. Albert wrote his winnings down on a notepad in the hotel room. We found the odds in his locker. Who has the betting slips? That son of a bitch, Albert. Everyone thought he was dumb, including me. But he beat them all. All right, fascinating insight, but she's not really answering our questions. Finally, we'll ask about her plans to leave town. You're leaving town, Miss Edwards? Yes, I'm going straight home. Well, at face value, that's true. We did find her bus ticket, but the way she's acting here is even more smug than before. Her head is moving all over the place. She's making eye contact from time to time, but wearing a little grin as if the secret she's holding is hilarious. She's not being completely forthright with us, but since we don't have evidence that she's lying, we'll instead doubt her story. Albert is going home by boat as soon as he collects his winnings. I know you're going to meet him. Albert is going to collect nothing. He'll be lucky if he can get out of town in one piece. How will you fare any better? They already believe you're in on it. Hell, I know you're in on it. You can think what you want, Buster. I'll take my chances. I got a few errands to run, and then I say adios to this dump. Do you want to press charges against our Carol? Just get him out of here. That's all I want. Get out, Carlo, you hump. And get rid of that pig sticker. You ever pull that thing on me, I'll shoot you like a dog. That bitch knows where Hammond is. She knows where my money's gone. My money too, tough guy. I'll handle this. Good luck, Miss Edwards. I hope things work out for you. Thank you. That's very kind of you to say so. Bad people are looking to hurt Candy, and yet she's not heading straight for the train station? I smell a payoff. I say stake her out, see where she goes. Perhaps those errands she was talking about included meeting a few bookies. Trusting Alcaro to get rid of his pig sticker, Cole and Royce take out the apartment. Tail is broad. Don't let her get away, but don't get spotted. I'll bring up the car behind you. She emerges from her door at 4.08 a.m. Cole sits down and pretends to read the paper. Candy is on a mission. She has a suitcase, and I wonder what she's about to fill it with. We now have to tail Candy through the streets of LA. This is a tricky part of the game, and I've failed on many occasions. But if we keep our distance and make good use of our surroundings, we follow her through a parking lot until she reaches a street. She then walks down a street past a tobacconist and then turns right. She continues down the sidewalk for a while until crossing the street towards some houses. Finding cover here is tricky, but if we're careful, we can watch her turn left into another parking lot. Every now and then she stops to look over her shoulder, as if she knows she's being followed. From the parking lot, she turns right past some houses and then walks down an alley. At the end of the alley, she reaches the street and turns right. If we make it there in time, Cole watches where she goes next. Bookmakers? Yes. Surprise, surprise. The windows are all papered up. There's no sign on the outside. This can only be one thing. Heading through the front door. That's the guy from the papers. A blonde oh, woman thing. just came in here. She went out the back way. Said she was being watched. How much did she collect? $3,600. She claimed me out. On the Hammond Kid Galahad fight? You got it. I'm not complaining. We all made a lot of money on that one huge plunge on Galahad, and then Hammond knocks the bum out. So she collected the money and went out through the back door? Nope. She made a phone call over there, wrote something on a notepad, 
and then left. So she made a call. Let's see to whom. Heading over to the notepad. What are you doing? An old intelligence trick from the Marines. Scribbling lightly, we reveal the impression marks she left with her pen. At length, the message becomes clear. We know where she's headed. Let's get moving. The next bookie is at the Examiner drugstore, and she left an address. Heading outside, we can hop into Roy's car. Hammond backed himself to win. And Candy is picking up the winnings. Smart play. Question is, is Candy collecting on Albert's behalf, or is she cheating him too? Car 11K, 11 King. Further to your request, Bunko Fraud has three known bookmakers operating out of storefronts in the Hollywood area. Thrifty Liquor, 6106 Santa Monica, the Examiner Drugstore, and a Max Spirits at 1658 North Cherokee. KGPL clear. Useful, but we already have the address for the Examiner Drugstore. That's our next stop. We arrive at 5.08 p.m. Detectives Phelps and Earl, LAPD. Relax, Cole. You just have a blonde in here, Mervyn? Sure did. I'm just about to close up. She took me to the cleaners. 4,000 clams and change. How long ago did she leave? Maybe five minutes. Called the cab. Asked for a number. I told her there was a card over there by the phone. And again, we are too late. Heading over to the phone, we can try to find this card. Yellow cab. We need to get after her, fast. Now we know which cab company. Using the nearby phone, we can have KGPL connect us. Operator, message for KGPL. Putting you through now. Can you connect me to the yellow cab company? Hollywood 2187, please. This is Detective Phelps, LAPD. You dispatched a cab to 1487 Ivar Avenue, Hollywood? Yes, sir. Send one round from the pool. Do you have the number of that cab? Number 179. Thanks. We're done playing around. Get Mervyn to give us an address on Ray's place. Do you have any idea who Ray is? Sugar Ray. Not now, Mervyn. Cole doesn't have much of a sense of humor at the best of times. Ray runs a shop up on North Cherokee Avenue, just south of Hollywood Boulevard. Cab 179. And with only one more bookie to visit, we know where she's going. Perhaps if we head towards Ray's place, we can spot her cab. This broad's planning on cleaning out every bookmaker in town. Hammond needed to make sure he was getting a bigger payday than if he'd taken the flop. Never trust the limeys, especially where a fight's concerned. A mistake we can't seem to stop making. Ooh, was that a jab at World War II? At any rate, we arrive at Ray's bookmaker's office at 5.13 p.m. That's the cab waiting up ahead. She's not in the car. Don't get too close. She must be inside. And we arrive just in time. She cleaned out Ray's and is heading to her cab. We're on the move again, Cole. After her. Don't lose that cab. Hammond is over the hill. He's a punching bag for the up-and-comers. She knows his goddamn place. I think he knows. I think he worked out the place isn't L.A. He's punchy. His brain's going to mush. Winston Churchill? Give me a break. Churchill is a fighter, Roy. Hammond didn't just scribble down the first name he could think of. And again, we have to follow her. This time, we're at least concealed in the car. But if we get too close, she spots us. The key is leaving just enough distance that she doesn't suspect us while not getting so far away that we lose her. All the while, Roy gifts us with more of his charming perspective. Hammond is full of himself. Being this sure he was going to win. God damn it. Everyone's looking at us, Cole. That bitch has given me what I'm owed. That's all I know.
over. She's heading inside. We arrive at the interstate bus depot at 5.40 p.m., so she is planning to ditch Hammond and take the winnings back to Ohio. I think I just saw Hammond. I'll tail him. You get in there and stay with Candy. Make sure you don't let her see you. Heading inside, we watch Candy head to the arrivals and departures board. Does the chicken come with fried tomatoes? Once done, she walks away. Is she gonna sit down? No. She heads through a door. Heading forward, we see that she's gone to the bathroom. Well, at least we know she's not going anywhere for a while. Uh-oh. Roy! Call an ambulance. Hammond got away. <laughs> Just try and sit still, Candy. Who shot you? Was it Albert? Car. They're on the way. I have a patrolman searching the depot. The chief's putting together a manhunt for Hammond. He got the money, right? Looks like it. A tough bird, our limey friend. Using his girlfriend as the bag woman and then getting greedy over the split. He won't make it out of town. That's how you see it? I told you that cocksucker was a crook. That's how Roy wants to see it. But what were Candy's last words? He, he's, he said... Just try me, and sit still, Candy. Who shot you? Pay. Was it Albert? It almost sounded like she said, He said to make me pay. Then when Cole asked her who Sorry, did this, she said, Ca Who shot pay. you? Was it Albert? Car. And then died. While her body bleeds out all over the bathroom floor, we can inspect her purse. Lying on the ground next to it is a gun. And Cole doesn't seem to care about fingerprints. Eh, why not? It's the 40s. Examining it closer. Thirty-two caliber. One shot fired. Looks like we've uncovered the murder weapon. But why did the killer leave it behind? Opening up her bag... Egyptian theater. So that's where Hammond took her, to the Egyptian theater. That's where they had their date. We found the other part of the ticket in Hammond's room. Could this be where Candy and Hammond were set to rendezvous? So what now? The theater, I guess. We don't have much else to go on. It's the only lead we have, so hopping out the window, we can race to Roy's car and have him take us there. Poor girl. She didn't deserve that. Poor girl. Half the precinct aren't taking a vacation this year because of her. You need to leave town a lot quicker than that if you decide to screw over Mickey C. Cole and Roy arrive at the Egyptian Theater at 9.05 p.m. And someone's here. We see a car pulled over in front of the theater, and the driver door is open. Someone came out in a hurry. This seems like a long shot. Aren't they all? Car 11 King, Car 11 King, come in. Car 11 King. Message from the coroner. Cause of death was a knife wound. Repeat, a knife wound. The revolver appears to have belonged to the victim. Casey Son of a bitch. He stabbed her. <laughs> I thought you said real men use their fists, not guns. That guinea cocksucker. You think he got the money too? Come on, Roy. We're bringing this whole tragedy to its conclusion. So the shot we heard coming from the bathroom was Candy using her own gun to fire upon her murderer. But wait a minute. If the gun belonged to Candy and Hammond was her boyfriend, he would have known she had the revolver. Why then would he use a knife? Looking up, we can see what's playing. Whichever way you turn, fate sticks out a foot to trip you. Hmm, I wonder if that's prophetic. Racing inside, we can open the door. And as we do, we overhear a conversation. Why'd you kill us, Carlos? Your gripe was with me. She was collecting the money for you. Mickey made it clear it was either me or you, and, and I intend to keep on living. It was Carlo who killed Candy. Carlo, his manager. Carlo with the pig sticker. Which means, if only we had taken his knife when we found it in his suit jacket pocket, Candy would still be alive. He killed Candy, took the money, then came here to kill Hammond. Perhaps we can intervene before he does. She stole those betting slips. She was running out on me. And you were going to let her? 
No, I let her collect. I set her up just like she set me up. Just like my manager set me up. Everyone wanted me to take a dive. Everyone wanted me to take a short money. It's for the best, kid. You were washed up, kid. You couldn't climb and you were too brave to sink. You were going nowhere. Maybe, but I had heart. I was a Royal Marine, Carlo. If I lost a fight, it wasn't for lack of trying. And it wasn't for lack of courage. I didn't have much. But I had that. I did it for you, and that's how you repay me! You did it for yourself, so did little boy. You did it to make a quick buck, and Candy did it to make her dream come true. Blah, blah, blah. I've got the money, all I need to do is get rid of you. It's going to be a shame, kid, but that's business. We've heard enough, Arcaro. Put down your weapon. You're making a big mistake. But Arcaro has no plans to go quietly. He opens fire on the detectives. We winged him, but we didn't kill him. But it looks like he's not alone. Cole and Roy come under fire from some of Mickey's goons. Clear me some space here. Oh, I'm about to die. Racing backstage, we can heal up a bit. Got one, but we missed one. While Roy and the goon exchange fire, we can come up from behind. Ah! Two down, one to go. Where's our Caro? He's not up on the balcony anymore. Perhaps he's in the stairwell. Heading to the stairs, we can round the corner slowly. It's time to come out now, Hammond. Put the gun down, Roy. That son of a bitch owes me a lot of money. Catch. Escania sails from New York, Hammond. Be on the next train and don't ever come back. Why? Because I was a Marine and I once lacked courage. Everyone deserves a second chance. Now beat it. Fuck you! That English prick is getting away with my money, Phelps! Donnelly and the Homicide Squad send their best, Phelps. They're more than pleased that you wrapped up the Edwards killing. They're a little mystified about the motive. You have any ideas on that? Uh, crime of passion, sir. Uh, looks like some sort of love triangle between the manager, the fighter, and the... Uh, his girlfriend. No sign of the scrapper? No, sir. Looks like he left town after the fight. Okay. It's homicide's problem now. Good work, gentlemen. <laughs> I think he knows we're not telling him the full story. But why did Cole let Hammond go with all the money? He gave us a clue. I once lacked courage, he said. Could that have anything to do with the flashback we saw at the beginning of the episode? Is Cole ashamed of something he did while fighting with his platoon at Okinawa? And he sure made Roy angry. Will that come back to bite him in the future? We'll find out in my next episode. I publish many videos each and every week here on my channel, so if you don't want to miss out, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you find you're still not getting notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter with every new piece of content that I publish. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My shirts come in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below Hello, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.